Shalom. Hi. It's Miriam Rachel, your faithful black sheep. Welcome, sheep in the garden. How are you? Well, today is 11-12-2020, but on the Gregorian calendar, it is the day after Christmas. How are you? Whew, I hope you're all rested up. We are in the book of Jasher. Hallelujah. And we're going to read about... I was thinking about calling this one as in the days of Noah, right? Don't we want to know what was going on in the days of Noah? Please tell me. Okay, so we're in chapter 5, verse, let's begin at verse 23. And all the sons of men who knew Jehovah died in that year before he brought evil upon them. For Yahuwah willed them to die. So as not to behold the evil that Elohim would bring upon their brothers and relatives, as he had so declared to do. And in that time, Yahuwah said unto Noah and Methuselah, Stand forth and proclaim to the sons of men all the words that I spoke to you in those days. Perchance they may turn from their evil ways. And I will then repent of the evil and will not bring it. And Noah and Methuselah stood forth and said in the ears of the sons of men all that Elohim had spoken concerning them. But the sons of men would not hearken. Neither would they incline their ears to all their declarations. And it was after this that Yahuwah said to Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me on account of their evil deeds. Behold, I will destroy the earth. And do you take unto you gopher wood and go to a certain place and make a large ark and place in it that spot? And thus shall you make it three hundred cubits its length, fifty cubits broad, thirty cubits high, three, it's basically three stories high, big, big boat. And you shall make unto you a door open at its side, and to a cubit you shall finish above and cover it within and without with pitch. And behold, I will bring the flood of waters upon the earth, and all flesh will be destroyed from under the heavens. All that is upon the earth shall perish, and you and your household shall go and gather two couples of all living things, male and female, bring them into the ark to raise them up from seed uh, raise up seed from them upon earth and gather unto you all food that is eaten by the animals uh, that there may be food for you and for them and you shall choose for your sons three maidens from the daughters of men and they shall be women to your sons and Noah rose up and he made the ark in the place where Elohim had commanded him and Noah did as Elohim had ordered him he, oh, he, what did he do? He trusted and obeyed, right? Hallelujah. In his 595th year, Noah commenced to make the ark, and he made the ark in five years, as Yahuwah had commanded. Then Noah took the three daughters of uh, Eliakim, son of Methuselah, for women for his sons, as Yahuwah had commanded Noah. And it was at that time, Methuselah, the son of Enoch, died. 960 years old was he at his death. Chapter 6. I can't wait to get to heaven to meet Methuselah. Amen. And Noah and all of them. And at that time, after the death of Methuselah, Yahuwah said to Noah, Go you with your household into the ark. Behold, I will gather to you all the animals of the earth, the beasts of the fields, and the fowls of the air, and they shall all come and surround the ark. And you shall go and seat yourself by the doors of the ark, and all the beasts and the animals and the fowls shall assemble and place themselves before you. And such of them as shall come and crouch before you shall you take and deliver into the hands of your sons, who shall bring them into the ark, and all that will stand before you you shall leave. So if they came to the door and they refused to bow down, he would not allow them on the ark. Why? Probably because they would, you know, try to eat him later or something. I don't know. <laughs> but we also remember in the beginning when uh, God brought all the animals to Adam to name what happened there. 
They all bowed before Adam, and Adam named them all. The only one he, God did not bring that day was the snake, right? Yeah. So, because Satan refused to bow down to Jesus, he's certainly not going to bow down to Jesus' creation. Amen? Right? So, if only Satan would repent, even now. I don't know. I just wish that I could understand God's great story. Even though we read it every day, there's always a new page to turn. Hallelujah, the never-ending story. Right? Amen. And Noah went in and seated himself by the door of the ark, and all flesh that crouched before him he brought into the ark, and all that stood before him he left upon the earth. And a lioness came with her two whelps, a male and a female, and the three crouched before Noah. And the two whelps rose up against the lioness and smote her and made her flee from her place. And she went away, and they returned to their places and crouched upon the earth before Noah. So he got two little baby lion cubs. Can you imagine? I want to be on the ark with two little baby lion cubs. Woo! <laughs> and the lioness ran away and stood in the place of the lions. And Noah saw this and wondered greatly. And he rose and took the two whelps and brought them into the ark. And Noah brought into the ark from all living creatures that were upon earth, so that there was none left but which Noah had brought into the ark. Two and two came to Noah in the ark, but from clean animals, clean fowls, he brought seven couples, as Elohim had commanded him. And all the animals and beasts and fowls were still there, and they surrounded the ark at every place, and the rain had not descended until seven days after. So seven days after the last animal entered the ark, the rain began, and on that day Yahuwah caused the whole earth to shake, and the sun darkened, and the foundations of the world raged, and the whole earth was moved violently, and the lightning flashed, and the thunder roared, and all the fountains in the earth were broken up, such as was not known to the inhabitants before. And Elohim did this mighty act in order to terrify the sons of men that there might be no more evil upon the earth. But still, the sons of men would not return from their evil ways, and they actually increased the anger of Yahuwah at that time and did not even direct their hearts to all of this. Don't be surprised that everybody around you seems to be asleep. Even in the days of Noah, they did not even direct their hearts to all or any of this. And at the end of seven days, in the 600th year of the life of Noah, the waters of the flood were upon the earth, and all the fountains of the deep were broken up, and the windows of heaven were opened. And the rain was upon the earth forty days and forty nights. Uh, so if the rain was upon the earth for forty days and forty nights, how long is it going to rain fire this time? Uh, woe to those left behind. And Noah and his household and all the living creatures that were with him came into the ark on account of the waters of the flood, and Yahuwah shut him in. And all the sons of men that were left upon the earth became exhausted through evil on account of the rain, for the waters were coming more violently upon the earth, and the animals and beasts were still surrounding the ark. And then the sons of men assembled together about 700,000 men and women, and that's over half a million, and they came unto Noah to the ark, and remember, the door's closed, right? It's been closed for a week. And they called to Noah. This is the foolish brides. They called to Noah, saying, Open for us that we may come into you in the ark. And wherefore shall we die? And we can jump right over to Matthew 25. You can just, that'll be your homework. Go read Matthew 25. Amen. And Noah, with a loud voice, answered them from the ark, saying, Have you not all rebelled against Jehovah? and said that he does not exist, and therefore Yahuwah brought upon you this evil, to destroy and cut you off from the face of the earth. Is not this the thing that I spoke to you of one hundred and twenty years back? And you would not hearken to the voice of Yahuwah. Now you desire to live upon earth. And they said to Noah, We're ready. <laughs> We're ready to return to Jehovah only Open for us, that we may live and not die. And Noah answered them, saying, Behold, now 
that you see the trouble of your souls, you wish to return to Yahuwah. Why did you not return during these 120 years, which Jehovah granted you as the determined period? But now you come and tell me this on account of the troubles of your souls. Now also Yahuwah will not listen to you. Neither will he give ear to you on this day, so that you will not now succeed in your wishes. And the sons of men approached in order to break into the ark, to come in on account of the rain, for they could not bear the rain upon them. And get this, and Jehovah sent all the beasts and animals that stood around the ark, and the beasts overpowered these men, and drove them from that place, and every man went his way, and they again scattered themselves upon the face of the earth. So God caused his animals to protect Noah inside the ark. Isn't that wild? And it will be the same at the end of days. There will be wild beasts coming down, some to help, some to kill. <laughs> right? It just depends on who you are. <laughs> And the rain was still descending upon the earth, and it descended forty days and nights, and the waters prevailed greatly upon the earth, and all flesh that was upon the earth or in the waters died, whether men, animals, beasts, creeping things, or birds of the air. And there only remained Noah and those that were with him in the ark. Or we could say only remained with him Noah and those that were with him in the tabernacle, right? What are we going to be? Raptured out. We're going to be tabernacled out, just like Noah was tabernacled in the no in the ark. And <laughs> Lot was tabernacled by angels out of Sodom. And the water, right? Amen. And the waters prevailed and they greatly increased upon the earth and they lifted up the ark and it was raised up from the earth. And the ark floated upon the face of the waters and it was tossed upon the waters so that all the living creatures within were turned about like pottage in a cauldron. And great anxiety seized all the living creatures that were in the ark, and the ark was like to be broken. And all the living creatures that were in the ark were terrified, and the lions roared, and the oxen lowed, and the wolves howled, and every living creature in the ark spoke and lamented in its own language, so that their voices reached to a great distance." And Noah and his sons cried and wept in their troubles. They were greatly afraid that they had reached the gates of death. And what is Noah doing here? Next, he's going to pray. Do not panic. Pray. We need to learn to pray. We try to do everything on our own volition. And we there's so much help at just, you know, the, the soft utterance of a single word word of prayer. So do not panic. Pray. Rest in Jesus. Trust Jesus. Amen. And Noah prayed unto Yahuwah and cried unto him on account of all of this. And he said, Oh, Jehovah, help us, for we have no strength to bear this evil that has encompassed us. For the waves of the waters have surrounded us. Mischievous torrents have terrified us. The snares of death have come before us. Answer us, O Yahuwah, answer us. Light up your countenance toward us and be gracious to us. Redeem us and deliver us. And Yahuwah hearkened to the prayers of Noah. And Yahuwah remembered him. And a wind passed over the earth. And the waters were still in the ark rested. And the fountains of the deep and the windows of the heaven were stopped. And the rain from heaven was restrained, and the waters decreased in those days, and the ark rested upon the mountains of Ararat. Now why, again, book test, why did the rain stop? Because Noah and all the animals were praying that it would do so, right? They were all crying out. Yes, God loves us. Amen. And Noah then opened the windows of the ark, and that Noah still called out to Yahuwah at that time. And he said, O oh, Jehovah, who did form the earth and the heavens and all that are therein, bring forth our souls from this confinement and from the prison wherein you have placed us. For I am much wearied with sighing. And Yahuwah hearkened unto the voice of Noah and said to him, When you shall have completed a full year, you shall then go forth. And this scripture completely agrees with Jubilees and other books where Noah 
Yes, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. That's true. It rained for a little over a month. But he had to wait in the ark for a year before he could exit it. Uh-huh. And at the revolution of the year, when a full year was completed to Noah's dwelling in the ark, the waters were dried from off the earth, and Noah put off the coverings of the ark. And at that time, on the 27th day of the second month, which is April, the earth was dry. But Noah and his sons and those that were with him did not go out from the ark until Yahuwah told them, Trust and obey, right? Until Yahuwah told them to get out of the ark, they stayed where they were told. And the day came that Yahuwah told them to go out, and they all went out from the ark. And they went and returned everyone to his way and to his place, and Noah and his sons dwelt in the land that Elohim had told them, and they served Yahuwah all their days. And Yahuwah blessed Noah and his sons on their going out from the ark. This is why the curse on Noah's son's son fell to his son because he could not he could not curse against his own son because God blessed them all as they were leaving the ark. And he said to them, Be fruitful and fill all the earth, become strong and increase abundantly in the earth and multiply therein. Did he say kill off 90% of the population? No. <laughs> multiply therein. All right. How I hope you enjoyed this study regarding Noah. And um, I don't know if I can. Here. Yes. Let's read a little bit more regarding Noah and the ark. Here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Because, uh, you know, it's talking about the four divisions of the year. And we know that is March, June, September, and December. And, you know, the Gregorian calendar counts it on the 21st of those months. But we know it to be the dark new moon. The Gregorian calendar is always a couple weeks behind God's calendar. Late, late, late. Okay. These are written and ordained as a testimony forever, these four divisions. And Noah ordained them for himself as feasts for the generations forever. They have become thereby a memorial unto him. And on the new moon of March, the first month, he was bidden to make for himself an ark. And on that day, the earth became dry and he opened the ark and saw the earth. And how do I know Passover's in March? Well, there's multiple written accounts historical accounts and even the letters of pontius pilate say that jesus was crucified towards the ides of march which on the jewish calendar is passover and then they wrote that fake book of esther and covered up passover with purim the book of esther was the only book in the whole entire bible there was not one single copy of it found in the Dead Sea Scrolls. Esther is a fake book to cover up the true Passover, but we figured it out. Thank you, Jesus, because of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And it's all in scripture. Everything's in scripture. If you just keep digging, you'll find all these things. I didn't make anything up. I could care less about the calendar. It could be July for all I know right now, but I know that God revealed these things to me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God's will be done. I'm happy to be on his calendar and keeping his holy Sabbath. But let's continue. And on the new moon of the fourth month, which is June, the mountains of the depths of the abyss were beneath were closed. And on the new moon of the seventh month, uh, September, all the mouths of the abysses of the earth were opened and the waters began to descend into them. And on the new moon of the 10th month, December, the tops of the mountains were seen and Noah was glad. And on this account, he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever, and thus they are ordained. These months divide the year. So the dark new moon of March, which actually would fall in late February, um, is, is the very first day of the year. So we're still going to be in 2020 until March. Okay, stay with me now. <laughs> you know, God reveals himself. I'm not going to question him. And on this account, he ordained them for himself as feasts for a memorial forever. And for thus they are ordained. And he placed them on the heavenly tablet. Each had 13 weeks for one to another past their memorial. 
from the first to the second, from the second to the third, from the third to the fourth, and the days of the commandment will be two and fifty weeks of days, and these will make the entire year complete. Thus it is engraven and ordained on the heavenly tablets. And there is no neglecting this commandment a single year from year to year. And I command you, that children of Israel, that they observe the years according to this reckoning, three hundred and sixty four days. And when we acknowledge these four divisions of the year in their correct place, it the calendar is exactly 364 days. And you worked with me on it months ago. You know, we did the calendar 17 different ways trying to figure out, you know, how this works out. I and mean, it wasn't until God revealed these scriptures to us that we were able to, uh, you know, understand what exactly he was trying to say and how to write his calendar. And so the way it rolls out is four months of the year have 31 days. And those are the four divisions of the year. So March, June, September, and December all have 31 days. The rest of the months carry 30 days only. Yes, hallelujah. But and that's exactly 364 days. Amen. If you spin it any other way, you're going to come up sh down to it, it. You'll probably end up at 360 because you're going to be missing those four days. Yep. Because that was the trap that, that we kept falling in as we studied. You remember? I deleted all those videos, but there's still some up there in the playlist. There's tons of them up there. Okay. Hundreds of videos. But at least a couple dozen regarding the calendar. But if they do neglect and do not deserve them, observe them according to his commandments, then they will disturb all their seasons. And the years will be dislodged from this order. And they will disturb the seasons. And the years will be dislodged. And they will neglect their ordinance. And all the children of Israel will forget and will not find the path of the years. And will forget the new moons and seasons and Sabbaths. And, you know, we know the first Sabbath is the first quarter of the moon. The second Sabbath is the full moon. The third Sabbath is the last quarter of the moon. The last Sabbath is the very last sliver of the moon. And the very next day is the dark new moon. The day no man knows right? Every month, that's how come this Sabbath floats. It's on a different day every month it moves. And that's Jesus trying to teach us to live in a constant state of Sabbath, to trust him at all times, no matter what is going on. Amen. And they will go wrong as to all the order of the years. And what do the Jews say it is right now? 5781, well, we know just by reading the books of Adam and Eve that we are in the year 7520. Hallelujah. We are in, we are literally in the seventh day and Jesus is going to be here any minute. I, I wish I could tell the world. I'm sorry, but I just feel like, I just feel like there's so many people out there suffering and that are looking for the truth. And just like I was when I was lost, they're looking in all the wrong places, right? They're, they're looking in relationships. They're looking in uh, money. They're looking in their career. They're, they're looking in drugs. They're looking in alcohol. They're looking in porn. They're looking everywhere but in the Bible. All the answers are here. I don't want anybody left behind. I will be done, Father. I trust you, Jesus. Jesus promised me nobody gets left behind. Don't be afraid. God's going to take care of you. I promise you, Jesus is coming for you his bride don't if if anybody says anything any differently then they're not teaching you what the scripture says <laughs> they're not i don't care how famous of a preacher they are they're lying and they're on their way to hell for or for lying for changing the word of god you know the one thing uh here is that i don't have a an opinion i'll tell you what scripture says because i'm a clean slate the only thing i know is what scripture has taught me i have no previous problems <laughs> you're right <laughs> i was just a i was just a bland vanilla christian before jesus got a hold of me 
and then who had gone apostate for 10 years looking uh, into the the Norse gods, into my forefathers' gods, looking for God. And I got there and I'm like, oh my, what happened here? Thor is just a man. Odin is just a man. Where is God? I need to know who God is. And I just kept searching and then Jesus came back for me. So please continue to pray for all God's children. Every single day, bow your head in prayer for your brothers and sisters because they're just as lost as you once were and I once was, right? They're suffering. Hallelujah. God's will be done on all God's children. Holy Spirit, come and return to your rightful place in our hearts. Wisdom, wisdom, we love you. Return to your rightful place. Amen. For I know and from henceforth will I declare it unto you. Verse 35, it is not of my own devising. This is what I'm telling you. I didn't, I didn't make any of this up. For the book lies written before me. And on the heavenly tablets, the division of days is ordained, lest they forget the feast of the covenant and walk according to the feast of the other nations after their error and after their ignorance. Guess what, brothers and sisters? December 25th as a holy day is in the Bible, but it's not. Christmas, it's Hanukkah. It's Hanukkah. The 25th of Kislev is the 25th of December, and it's Hanukkah. And Jesus walked in the temple during the winter feast. Jesus kept Hanukkah and the seven spirits of God. Oh, yes, those seven candles represent the seven spirits of God. Oh, oh I've got to give you some scripture on that before we even go one more step. Because this is so important. So many people are deceived by this whole Christmas thing. And and I know. I mean, my kids are still putting up trees. I mean, I get it. So here you have Exodus chapter 25, verses 31 through 37. Hope you're writing this down. Zechariah 4.2. Zechariah 4.10. 2 Chronicles 16, 9, Isaiah chapter 11, Revelation chapter 1, verse 4, 